I think the entire album as a whole is really ethereal, whimsical, floaty, if you will. It has more of like an otherworldly wonderland escape kind of vibe, which is really cool to just to see like how different it is from her other albums. So rather than literally have like an hour long video about reaction to Taylor Swift's new album, I'm going to do a time lapse of me listening to it and reacting to it. And I'm really excited. If you haven't yet seen my reaction to Cardigan, I'll have it up here or down there and or both. So please go watch that and I'm just going to listen to her new album. Are you going to listen with me? Okay. So I just listened to the one and I think there are some very powerful lyrics in that. In my defense, I had none. Um, I really like that song. I think it was really powerful and I wonder who it's about. I want to hope that she's in a happy relationship and that it's about maybe like Calvin Harris or Harry Styles. I don't know. Um, but somebody that she really wanted to be with and it didn't work out and now she realizes like the person that she's with is who she's happy with. Um, the second song on the album is Cardigan, which I'm going to skip because I've already listened to it. So next is The Last Great American Dynasty and I'm really really hoping that this is about our political climate and how we are uh, living in a dystopia. The Last Great American Dynasty reminds me of, it's like the sequel to The Lucky One from Red. Um, it really, it was like a continuation of a woman like making it and coming into money and realizing like people aren't going to treat her the way that they would treat somebody like a man who has money. And then in the end, like Taylor comes to buy the house where this woman kind of met her downfall and it really just kind of continues that story like the entire time I was listening to it I was thinking of the lucky one um and it and the last great American dynasty is also like the first more upbeat higher energy um like you can easily dance to it song on the album and it's the third one out of a lot there's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen 14, 15, 16, 16. So like, I really don't know. Like I felt like it was gonna, the first two songs were setting the tone and then this song's totally different. And the next one has Exile featuring Bon Iver. So I'm just gonna listen to it all and I'll, I'll keep checking back. Um, I can definitely see the roots of Exile in Taylor's previous music. I don't know if it's the song for me. I think it was very repetitive and though very beautiful, I just, I don't know. I don't think I liked it. Editing Susan coming at you looking like a hot piece of garbage, but really quickly, I wanted to input that throughout the course of the day, I listened to this album three or four more times, and each time I listened to it, I liked it a lot more. So though the initial reaction in like the entire video is my true initial reaction I don't think it justifies the album and how amazing it is and the fact that like Taylor really came from a vulnerable sort of state and made this piece of art um so I just wanted to put that in there so but now we're gonna listen to open open my tears ricochet I think there were some powerful lines in that song. If you wish me dead, then why are you at the wake? Like, and I think that song was a lot about her perseverance and determination as a human being, as a female artist, as a public figure who has gone through so much ridicule and just judgment and people never taking her word for anything. I think that's a lot of what that song was. It was really powerful. Okay, next is Mirrorball. 
So I think Mirrorball has a lot of influence from like early 2000s, late 90s music. Um, Cause right when it started, I really got the, I'm gonna soak up the sun. Excuse me, cause I know I'm not talented, but like that's kind of the vibe that I got. Like definitely pulling more from her, <laughs> hi, pulling more from her childhood um, and like going from there and like, as an artist, I think definitely. Thank you for laying down on the other side of me. Next is Seven. And I wonder if that's about Lover as her seventh album. I wonder if it's about a time when she was seven. I don't know, we'll see. So I don't think I like Seven, the song. Obviously, it's a song I'm reacting to an album here. Um, I think there was a lot of different tones happening, and I don't know if they fit very well for my particular taste. But I definitely think it was about Lover as her seventh album because it said I hit my peak at seven, and honestly, if you're peaking at seven, like... So I'm, I'm really hoping that she didn't actually hit her peak at seven years old and that she's talking about Lover and like all of the different, because that's like when she came out politically and was like discussing politics in her songs, like Miss Americana and You Need to Calm Down. I love August. This is honestly like the vibe in the song that I expected for the entire like tone of the album. And I know that's like not fair of me to Taylor. Like she put in all of this work and all of her own time and money to like make this and I had expectations and like that's not fair like I'm not a creator but this I really like this song there are so many powerful lines in this album I got wasted like all my potential Taylor you're killing me this is incredible this is Alyssa Affairs just made me sad. It just makes me want and hope that Taylor gets her happy ending and that it's everything she ever wanted it to be. Invisible String is just like the cutest song. It's so cute and it's like how like little girls think of romance and how they're gonna find their happily ever after with the person of their dreams like well not just little girls like any kid and it's just so cute whoever pissed taylor off and i'm pretty sure i know who the song is about but i didn't write it i didn't discuss it so i'm not gonna jump to conclusions i'm not a fan of epiphany and i think i'm just gonna leave it at that is betty a true story did Taylor Swift do something when she was 17 and regret it and it really impacted Betty? Who's Betty? I like it. The harmonica hit different. I don't know what I think of Peace. I think that like the underlying beat, like the doo 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 doo, was really cool. I'm definitely gonna have to listen to this album multiple times before I form an opinion on the overarching work. One more song left, here we go with Hoax. Hoax is a song that kind of reminds me about how I've been feeling about current events and the world lately. Hopeless, like, what's going on in Portland, the fact that people can't just wear fucking masks so that this pandemic will be over, the fact that people can't understand that other people shouldn't be afraid to go outside 
in public because of the color of their skin or their gender identity or their sexuality. And it, I've just been feeling really hopeless about everything lately and listening to hoax, that's like the vibe I get. Like, I think Taylor feels that way too.